Welcome to Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we're going to have a look at how COVID-19 has affected our power sports world. But first, we're going to go back in time, back to last spring before COVID and the lockdowns to the time we spent at Limerick Lake Lodge. Now, we didn't know it at the time, but it turned out to be our last ride of the season, but it was also one of our best rides of the season. Stay tuned, because it all starts right now. Brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. For STV, we get to go to some pretty epic destinations, but with those epic destinations, they come with a lot of baggage. I mean, we could be spending days and literally thousands of kilometers behind the wheels of trucks and trailers, or airport after airport after airport just getting there traveling, and it can all get to be a bit much. For this trip, we wanted to keep things simple and go to a place relatively close to home. And we found it with Limerick Lake Lodge. We first experienced this lodge when we came here for an ATV ride in the summer months. At that time, our group enjoyed the cottage type atmosphere where we were all reminded of being at our traditional family cottages from days gone by while we were here at the lodge. The winter is no different. Limerick Lake Lodge simply has the ability to make you feel comfortable and welcome, which makes spending time here with some friends even more enjoyable. Not knowing what to expect, as soon as we got here, you could tell it was a small town feel getting in here. It was probably going to be bare bones, but it was, I was surprised in regards to what he had to offer here as soon as we got inside. With the small group that we have here, uh, you, you just got to step back and look at how close everybody's going to be and how well everybody's going to get along um, as this place fills up. It's, it's pretty close quarters, but that's kind of what you're looking for when you're getting out and trying out in these kind of adventures. Yeah, when I heard that you were coming back to Limerick Lake Lodge, I, I immediately said, I'm in. I want to come back. Uh, George does a great job here. You know, we wake up in the morning, he has everything prepared for you, like you're eating breakfast, you're out the door as early as you want to be. Um, so we were out the door by like nine o'clock every day. And uh, it was easy to park your truck and trailer. It didn't seem to be, again, it was like less than two hours for us to get here. So as soon as I found out you were coming here, I was, I'm all in. Outside the lodge, this area also has a familiar feel to it. For everyone in the group, we're only about two to three hours from home, so we've all been in this area to ride before. But this meant we also knew we'd be in for some excellent late season riding. Now to keep things simple, we didn't have any itinerary we had to follow, so we were left on our own time to decide which trails we took and for how long our days were gonna be. Essentially, all we had to do was enjoy the ride. It almost seems like we're in our own backyard. Uh, it is a bit of a relief. There's less, like I said, less agenda and uh, more time to actually get out and enjoy the riding. Um, more opportunities like this are going to come up and uh, I'm probably going to have to jump on more of these rides. Yeah, it's a great launching pad. It's, that's perfectly set. Um, you can start here, you can go to Halliburton, you can make it all the way up to uh, Lake St. Peter, you can go over, you can, you can go as far as you want. You can get to Pembroke and probably back. Um, it's a great area. I mean, the trails here are second to none and shouldn't be overlooked. That's, you know, for us, it's an hour and a half, two hours in between Ottawa and Toronto. And people automatically assume you have to go north in Ontario. You don't. It's right here. It's, it's pretty far south, actually. Oh, this has been one of the best trips of the year. It's been very laid back, very casual. We've been riding, we put on a ton of miles, especially shooting for the TV show, um, which takes a lot of time. We still managed to do 150 miles yesterday and we didn't get started 
at the crack of dawn. So for us, I mean, for myself, it's amazing like that you can cover so much territory. You can see so many different uh, types of terrain. Like we had everything from super wide trails down to pretty like, you know, sled and a half width portages. And it, to me, it's exciting to see that and to be able to experience every different type of riding. Like we were on rail grades, bush roads, logging roads, lakes, etc. Like it's, it's an amazing place that you have to come explore this. The trail conditions were as close to perfect as they could get. Um, zero complaints in regards to, you know, the 120, 140 miles that we did uh, in the last two days. If you can get good snow, which this area always gets great snow, um, it, it starts early and there's a lot of logging roads, so you're not dependent on the lakes, even though they do freeze up early and they are safe and they are staked. Um, just by exploring different areas close to home, you're not going through, if you don't want to go through like farm fields and concession roads, you don't have to do that here. You can, there are some farm fields, but you can go and explore all the different types of uh, terrain. And it's really, it's really cool to see because any direction you go, if you go east, west, north or south, they're all so different, which makes it a fun place to uh, come to. The in-between stuff is the stuff that you got to enjoy and take time to step back and relax. and there was more than enough opportunity to do that the whole time we were here. There is a lot of snowmobilers in this area that do travel through and it's a great place to kick back I found, especially at the Lodge, Limerick Lake Lodge. We got to play pool, there's some ping pong, you know, you can have some beverages at night. You're not going anywhere, it's all contained. So I, I really like that. STV is brought to you by Motovan, for the love of power sports. We've been on the lake as cottagers since 1947, and then uh, I've owned the business here. This will be coming up on my 15th season of having the business here. Yeah. So the, a big part of the business is to service the seasonal residents, the cottagers on the lake with the marina in the summertime. Uh, you guys were here and visited me um, as uh, ATV a World a couple of summers ago. Um, so I, I thought it was a great time to uh, look at my winter business. Uh, I did have some groups of ice fishermen coming in, a few families. Uh, but it was a great opportunity to fill empty weekends and yeah. especially weekdays in the winter time uh, with snowmobilers. And the lodge here is is also nice that it, it has kind of a, to me when I when I come in and I, I would describe the area or the lodge here as kind of like old school cottage. You know, it, it does feel like it's like a family cottage that's that's been in the family for a couple of generations, and you know, and I think that's an advantage of to what you have because it, it just gives you that you know, immediate sense of relaxation that you're, you're in a comfortable place. And I, I kind of feel I'm picking up from you that th that's by design, that you want people to have that type of feel when you come here. Yeah, it's, it's, we strive for that laid back. We have the, the you know, have a game room with uh, billiards, ping pong, yeah. uh, video game. Uh, you can come here and relax. You don't have to, no, nothing's fancy or formal. Uh, kick back, you know, watch TV, whatever you want to do and uh, it, it is easy to, to just come here and unwind and enjoy yeah. the facility. Um, yes, it's old. It, it, most of the building was built in the 1800s, so it it's, has seen a lot of generations. Yeah. And um, as, a, as a resort lodge, it's, it's been functioning that way since the late 1940s, so it's, it's been here a long time. Our first destination was to uh, 762 Brewery. How did, why did you think that that was a good idea for us to go down there? Well, I, I knew that when you were here a few years ago, you enjoyed the tour of uh, Bancroft Brewing, so I thought it would be a nice opportunity to uh, feature another local entrepreneurial business yeah. in, in the area, and, and, and as I say, they're brand new. It's a very easy destination. Yeah.
you got to take advantage of the the local personalities getting out there to, to meet these people you get a lot of information uh, the stuff that you're going to want to know to go to the places that you're going to want to see while you're here you come here for a couple days you got to take in as much as you can while you're here um, and you know down in Maydock uh, out at the brewery to, to meet with the gentleman there sample a few beverages and then out at the fire hall for for a nice feed great people uh, great establishments um, that's the stuff that keeps people coming back to these small towns. I think that this area here, there's restaurants everywhere, like in Bancroft, and we were, we were in Coe Hill the other day, which has a fabulous restaurant, The Hideaway. Um, you can go there on a weekend, they say there's over 100 sleds there parked all throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, they say that you have to make reservations, if not, you're not getting a table. Places like Limerick Lake Lodge remind us that we don't need to always work towards an epic riding destination. Sure, those bucket list type places can deliver great experiences, but sometimes the simplicity of a destination that's close to home can be as enjoyable and as memorable as those more complicated trips. There's a lot more to just jumping on the backs of these machines and, and ripping around the trails. You know, the, it's the environment that we're in and, uh, and the people that we meet makes the, the whole experience enjoyable. Oh, I had a blast here. Three days of riding. Um, we never really touched the same trail twice. We didn't even leave the resort on the same trail. So for me, that was exciting that we got to branch out and uh, no trail was left unturned, but we didn't get, have to double back on the same trail. So exploring a new area like this on snow, it's a lot of fun. The last couple of days have been some of my best days on the snow this year. I mean, we experienced absolutely spectacular spring riding conditions. And the hospitality we got from George here at Limerick Lake Lodge and everywhere else we stopped at along the trail along the way was absolutely perfect, second to none. And I really feel as a group, we got to experience the fun of snowmobiling again, which is really the point of snowmobiling in the first place. This portion of STV is brought to you by Ford, built Ford tough. COVID-19 has changed our world in ways that nobody could have predicted. But often in a situation like this, there is a silver lining. Now, a lot of us are choosing to change the way that we recreate and spend our time doing it closer to home and with people inside our bubble. And power sports has become one of the ways that we're choosing to do that. Recently, we caught up with Brian Hudgen at Yamaha to talk about the ways COVID-19 has changed our power sports world. Well, short term has been a huge demand um, spike. So we, we had a lot of, um, it was pretty steady before it happened. And as it happened, um, the first month or two, there was dealerships closing. There was a lot of uncertainty in the air. Uh, but as May hit and you know the ice started to melt and customers started going, well, if I'm gonna be at home for a while here, I wanna spend some money on some power sports products. We saw a huge demand spike. So um, the biggest change for us has been trying to meet this demand um, with relatively lower supply now because of some of the factory shutdowns that we've had, uh, some of the supply chain issues. So on the one hand, retail has been very hot and on the other hand, wholesale has been a little bit harder to fulfill. So that's our biggest challenge and our biggest change, I guess, in the market is that we're getting so many new customers into the sport, which is fantastic because for many years we've been looking at mature markets thinking, how do we get more new riders into the sport? And uh, this has been a great boon, I think, for the power sports industry. There was a big uptick in sales across basically the whole Yamaha line and it did happen at different points but uh, there was a significant uptick in sales so it really started off with knobby tire product groups so we had ATVs, side-by-sides and dirt bikes um, with a really high degree of demand right off the start because the snow melts and everybody wants to get out and ride. Um, but the next thing we started to notice was the marine product groups. So once the ice thawed and people got up to those cottages or those cabins or those second properties that they go to, the hunt camps, things like that, uh, we saw a big demand in the marine products start to get going. So um, as the summer went on, uh, 
uh, generator sales and OPE sales started to pick up as well. So um, as the summer went on, different product groups really caught fire. And uh, it's been a very interesting time to say the least for a manufacturer, given some of these challenges that we're facing. But uh, we're confident we can start to meet um, some more of that demand moving forward. We're seeing a lot of these trends persist and there's a lot of enthusiasm around snowmobiles. So a lot of our early deposit snowmobiles are now being delivered and there's a really good success rate on those in terms of people not walking away from deposits, which we were originally concerned with back in the spring. If you'll recall, the pandemic sort of first happened right during our spring power surge season and we were getting a little bit uh, cautious in the sense of how many of these deposits will be around in the fall given the uncertainty of the time. But that doesn't seem to have happened at all. It seems like everybody's been uh, coming in on their spring deposits and uh, it looks very positive for the snowmobile industry. We need to be cautious about just how excited we get about a pandemic. I mean, it's, it's not something that is ever wanted or, or required. Um, but certainly it's shown us a silver lining that there is a need for this sport and people are gravitating towards it in a time when they're looking around saying, what can I do with my recreation dollars? So. Um, we're seeing an uptick and we really want to make sure that we capitalize on it. Um, and I think anytime there's new riders coming into a sport, that bodes well because, as I've mentioned before, not many people decide to get out of it or don't like it once they've experienced it. There's just a, a general, there's a lot of barriers to entry to motorsports in some cases. You, maybe you need a truck, maybe you need a place to ride it, maybe you need a license or something. So um, when those barriers are free and clear and people actually get to try the sport, um, <laughs> More often than not, they, they really enjoy it and they want to keep doing it. So um, we see that this is going to be more than just a bit of a blip. We're going to turn this into a trend and we're really excited to get new customers. I mean, that's the number one thing that, that we're really excited about is getting new customers into the, into the sport and making sure that they refer friends who maybe never tried it before and they go out riding together. So we think there's some growth opportunity here and we're really excited to, to keep moving forward. Things are definitely changing at the snowmobile and power sports industry at the manufacturer level, but also at the dealership. Coming up after the break, we headed to Wilt Marine and Power Sports to talk with them about how your customer experience is changing. Closed captioning is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. So Rick, talk to me a little bit about uh, how, how crazy things have been since COVID-19's kind of come into our lives. Well, at the beginning, we, we shut down uh, and used a very skeleton crew. And it was, uh, we were answering the phones, letting them know we're still here, but we weren't really interacting with the customers. Mm -hmm. and, and we just wanted to let them know that we were in business, we have the product, and, and that we were planning on trying to open up as soon as uh, the government would allow us to. So in that time, we were able to clean house sort of thing, like organize our desk, go through our files, update a lot of things, um, rearrange showrooms, uh, decide on things with a skeleton crew. Uh, then we slowly bought back our, our service team mm -hmm. and uh, a, as we were allowed to. And once that happened, the next step was we were allowed to open our showrooms. But the showrooms weren't open the same way we did. We used to have a lot of people just come in. Of course, uh, yeah. Doors would open beginning of the day and everybody would just walk through and touch and sit and everything like that, that stopped. Mm -hmm. What we had to do is put some barricades in. We had to, we had to do by appointment only. Yeah. And then we had to be with the client so we knew what they were touching and, and, and being around because cleaning is a big important part of that. Of course, yeah. So And sanitization stations when somebody comes in and obviously the masks that we're wearing even now. Yeah, that was a big adjustment for us. And I think we, for the most part we've done a great job of that. We've had zero COVID in, in any of our operations. We've had no uh, people with COVID. And, and I think customers too are receptive to it. I mean, very we, receptive. You know, we accept if we have to wear a mask to come in and, and look at our new toys, we're going to wear a mask. No problem. If you have to make an appointment, we're going to do that too. And maybe talk to me about your summer. I mean, you've gone through a boat season now, uh, ATV season, motorcycle season, uh, side by side season. Has that, has that been good for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. It's been very good. Um, uh, we, we've, we've sold out of, of most of our product lines. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have uh, some uh, tin boat lines still available to, to sell. And on another end, our personal watercraft, our wave runners, we don't have any. Of course, yeah, I don't see any in the showroom. No, and we're usually able to show you uh, a model, at least talk to you about a model. Mm -hmm. People who want to make sure they have one next year, mm -hmm. 
put their money deposits down. And uh, yeah, this is a new thing for us as well. And I think that's a new thing, again, going back to the, the, the change of the customer experience. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for a product that, that may run into supply issues, you really do have to get your name in early, correct? Yes. The reality is if this is a product line that you want, you have to commit to it sooner. And, and, and we don't like that, but it's a reality of what's taking place now. Yeah. Uh, more people must be staying at home because the demand is, is increased ex exponentially. They want to make sure they have one. And again, it goes back to the clients that do accept that reality has changed. So they are willing to work with you and you're willing to work with the customer and, and do your best to fulfill everybody's needs, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it, but it's very dependent on our manufacturers and their ability to deprive us with the product. Mm -hmm. And they've done a great job. They've been, the emails, correspondence has been fabulous. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't had anybody drop the ball in that respect. They're very attentive to all of us. That's and great. that parlays back to the customer that they're being looked after. Yeah, and that's that's the most important thing. Now, with, with all these this, this new trend that's happened, uh, where we've seen this big upsurge in popularity for power sports, again, across the board, it doesn't matter if it's a snowmobile or an ATV or a boat. Do you think, uh, do you think this is a good trend? Or do you think we're, the power sports industry is in a really good place right now, despite maybe something that's not so great, a, a pandemic that, that's sort of driven that? Yeah. that? That's the downside, but I'm excited. I'm excited for, for our product line and I'm excited for people to be able to use it. <laughs> well, thanks for inviting us in today and uh, I'm looking forward to looking around your showroom here. Okay. It's clear COVID-19 has changed our world and is something that we're going to have to live with for a long time. Even now, we're shooting this episode in mid-November and we really don't know what the snowmobile season is going to look like or if we're going to be even allowed to ride at all. Now, of course, I'm hoping we can be riding. And if we are, please remember to follow COVID protocols wherever your snowmobile adventures might take you. See you next time. STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. Schaefer's, specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts, ready to get away?